Hi everyone, I'm uh, Town Administrator Michael Canales. I'd like to welcome everybody here. Uh, I specifically like to welcome Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, Secretary Rebecca Tepper, President Holsey of the Stockbridge Muncie Band of Mohegans, Senator Paul Mark, Representative John Barrett, and all other honored guests today. The Town of Stockbridge is proud to host the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program and the award winners for this year. The Town of Stockbridge has had a long tradition of balancing quality of life in the environment. We maintain trails, plant trees, beautify the community, many things like that that have long happened in our town. Um, we have Laurel Hill Association, one of the, ol the oldest uh, village improvement society in the United States. And the town itself has just recently completed a culvert assessment program funded by the MVP program. So we're very thankful for all the work and continued support that the Commonwealth gives us. Today we're going to hear about many projects that will help Massachusetts improve, create sustainable infrastructure and climate resiliency. These will range from many different um, plans, many different assessments and projects. I for one look forward to hearing about these projects in specific, the project that's going to be happening here in Stockbridge. So I'll turn it over now to the Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, Michael. As a former local official, words like culvert assessment, that's my love language. That is my love language. Um, I'd like to begin this morning with a statement that we feel is really especially relevant today. It's with gratitude and humility that we acknowledge that we are speaking and gathering on the ancestral homelands of the Mohican people, who are the indigenous peoples and original stewards of this land. Despite tremendous hardship in being forced from here, today their community resides in Wisconsin and is known as the Stockbridge Muncie Community. We are pleased to be able to honor and pay respects to their ancestors, past and present, as we commit to building a more inclusive and more equitable state for all. And I want to thank and recognize members of the tribe who are here today, including President Shannon Holsey, Director of Cultural Affairs Monique Tyndall, Tribal Liaison Sherry White, and Cultural Preservation Officer Bonnie Hartley. It's an honor to stand here with all of you as we mark a very historic moment, not just the giving away of grant dollars that are going to help our community stay healthy and strong, um, but with steps that we're announcing today, the north slope of the land, now known as Fen Farm on Monument Mountain, will once again be stored by the Stockbridge Muncie Band of the Mohican Nation. That's not only... Yeah, thank you. That's not only a meaningful step forward in relation to our history, but it also means that indigenous land management practices and traditional ecological knowledge are going to help us fight and adapt to an ever-growing and present changing climate future. On behalf of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, we welcome the tribe home and look forward to supporting your efforts to store this land. I also want to thank the town of Stockbridge for their support of this project. Like any good project, it takes a lot of people coming together. Stockbridge Town Administrator Michael Canales, the Stockbridge Select Board members who were here. Obviously, we have members of the delegation who were here, um, both Representative Barrett and Senator Mark, for not only their stewardship of initiatives like this, but the funding that we have for the MVP program. It's one of the most popular programs among local officials, because we're all interested in figuring out how we can future-proof the communities we love in and that we live. It's not possible without resources, without an understanding of the policy initiatives. And our, we're fortunate to live in Massachusetts where we have a legislative delegation who understands that and supports these initiatives. So really grateful that you're both here. And, and finally, I want to thank our EEA and MVP program staff. This is the most popular program, which means there's a lot of information to sift through, to better understand. Um, as a former local official, uh, we, we're fond of saying, um, plan the work, work the plan. And this MVP program allows you to plan the work, understand your, vul your vulnerabilities, where your hazards are, do those culvert assessments, and then also to work that plan with the action. This 2.0 program is really geared towards ensuring as we think about the climate crisis, it can be overwhelming. But how do you, how do you move forward? Well, you plan and then you act and you come together as a community. So really grateful for the staff who are leading that effort. <laughs> 
Now, this project here in, in, in Stockbridge, this historic project, is made possible in part by this state's flagship municipal vulnerability, vulnerability preparedness program. That's why we call it MVP, because it doesn't exactly roll off the lips. Um, and as part of that effort, today we'll be awarding $2 million through an MVP action grant to the Stockbridge Muncie Band of Mohicans to facilitate their return to this land. It's part of nearly $32 million in MVP grant funding that we'll be announcing today to communities across Massachusetts, some of whom I see representatives are here today. Thanks for those of you who traveled. It's really worth the visit to come to Stockbridge and uh, so grateful to have so many community representatives here. And for those who aren't familiar with MVP, let me just tell you a little bit more about how critical these funds are. As we know, the climate crisis is here. This year alone, we've seen floods and drought, extreme heat, freezes. Sometimes that can happen all in the same season. And it's really quite devastating. The governor and I were um, spending a, quite a bit of time in parts of Western Mass, Conway and others. Conway, who I know, is also receiving an MVP grant. There you are. Um, excited. Um, but it was, you know, it's, it's really difficult when you see these actions taking place. The impact we've had to farmlands in Western Mass in particular, all, over 2,500 acres, just really ruined. Just when we were about to harvest, that has far, um, that has far um, impacting actions beyond just Western Mass. And it's one of the reasons we think these funds are a really critical, you know, down payment on how we protect our communities moving forward, whether it's farms washing away, coastlines eroding. I'm from Salem, a coastal community, land drying up. We're going to need collective action and, frankly, a, a lot more of it in order to address this, this critical needs. And that's where the MVP program comes in. As, as local officials, many of you know, like dollars are tight. It's hard to find the dollars to do the planning and to undertake the actions. And you certainly can't do it alone. You need a state partner. We need federal partners. And this program allows local communities to invest in their future and really come together. Um, that often means building consensus. Um, that means having hard conversations. I know some of the adaptive actions that need to be taken are different. Um, and that means coming up with a plan. Th these were these dollars support. Second, communities can also, as I mentioned, put those plans into action. So today we're announcing almost $29 million in action grants to get projects going. These are to communities who already identified vulnerabilities and hazards and are now working to try and move forward in a way that's going to address that. And I think the third thing that's really important as we think about the MVP program, we're putting environmental justice at the heart of climate resiliency. Back in April, we announced uh, the MVP 2.0 for that purpose, realizing that oftentimes the communities that are most harmed by the impact of the climate crisis were the communities that took on the most burden in terms of the issues that we needed in our, in our communities at that time. I, I say this as a, the mayor of a community that hosted a coal-fired power plant for many years. I mentioned this to the secretary just yesterday. You know, we were probably happy to have that coal plant come to Salem in 1950. It meant jobs and tax revenue, but it also meant economically disadvantaged individuals were burdened by what we know coal plants leave behind. And it didn't end up in Marblehead Neck or Manchester by the Sea or the Gold Coast. It came to a gateway city that welcomed immigrants that has a very diverse population. Through MVP 2.0, we're hoping to right some of those wrongs and make sure that as we're thinking about the climate crisis and the impacts that we're impressing upon um, our, the work that we're doing to improve environmental justice neighborhoods, to call out some of those injustices that occurred. And so today with MVP 2.0, we're announcing $3 million in funding for communities to revisit their local climate resiliency plans with an emphasis on equity and environmental justice. Because of MVP and the funding that we're awarding today, communities will be able to pursue their resilience priorities, both big and small. That includes projects like green infrastructure installation, open space preservation, tree planting. Hooray, who loves trees? We all do, right? Heat mitigation, among many others. And frankly, communities know how to do this best. We're putting dollars in local hands with locals who know how to solve challenges on the ground that they're exper experiencing. The Stockbridge Muncie Band knows how to do this. Our cities and towns know how to do this. And I certainly saw it as mayor. Local knowledge is key. So as Lieutenant Governor and certainly alongside Governor Healy, who brings her greetings, I should say that we are both so proud to be able to represent Massachusetts, not only as part of the first two female team to lead this Commonwealth in the Capitol, um, but also, yeah, we like that. <laughs> We were just saying the future is female and we're okay with that. Um, but, but frankly, as real 
partners and, and um, building a strong team in Massachusetts, we firmly believe that when we empower our communities to do good work and take collective action, that our commonwealth is better for it. We're stronger, we're healthier, we're able to move forward, we're able to meet the moment that we need to. So Governor Healy and I are committed to continue to grow this popular grant program and the partnership it fosters. This is a profoundly meaningful relationship between the state and communities, embracing a challenge together, just like we're seeing here with the Stockbridge Muncie Band of Mohicans. We know we can only tackle impacts of the climate change crisis that we're seeing together. And we feel like we have much to learn from grantees that are not only gathered here today, but ones that will come after as well. These are important initiatives. We can learn from each other. That's one of the things that I think local officials do quite well is copycat. <laughs> it's a, usually a sign of uh, encouragement. And, and frankly, if you're able to do it here in Stockbridge, that means we can mimic that in other communities as well. So I want to thank all of you for not only turning out for today's announcement, but for the work I know you're going to do in your communities, on the ground, the places you live, the places you love, making sure we have a strong and healthy commonwealth as we move forward. And with that, it's my pleasure to be able to share the stage today with Secretary Tepper. Um, Governor Healy and I are so fortunate to have built out a really strong cabinet, individuals who could be doing a lot of things, but bring their strength, their talent, their commitment and dedication to ensuring that Massachusetts is at the forefront of tackling this climate crisis. We couldn't have anybody better leading our team at uh, EEOA than Secretary Tepper. So grateful that she's here this morning. Secretary Tepper. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. You know, I, I don't think there's another place I'd want to be today. Yeah. This is a good day. Um, not every day is great, but today is a good day. <laughs> so um, thank you all so much for coming. Um, you know, it takes a village to, to run these programs and for the people in towns to implement them. So I do want to thank um, several people. Uh, first, I want to thank our team um, and that we have several people here today. Uh, Catherine Antros, who's the Undersecretary of Decarbonization and Resilience. Marie <laughs> wave. You should wave. <laughs> uh, we have Maria Belen Power, who is our first Undersecretary of Environmental Justice and Equity. <laughs> we have Kara Reinstein, who, as you know, runs the MVP program. <laughs> And I'm missing, I can't see, Ori, where are you, Oleana? Uh, there we go. Uh, Oleana Stone, I'm pronouncing your name wrong, I'm sorry. Oleander Stone, um, who also you all know well. So um, I also, and I think that we have several other people from the MVP program, if you all could just tell us who you are. Yeah, thank you. You know, this is, um, as the Lieutenant Governor said, this is one of our um, signature uh, programs. And people love it because it gives money directly to towns to do work that's important to them. And so I do want to also thank all of you who are getting awards today. I know it's not easy to fill out applications, to get your town invested in these projects, to do all the work that it takes to actually do the plan. That, that, that's effort. And um, I really do appreciate the fact that you're all participating in this program and that it's um, such a success. So if you all could wave your hands to people who are getting grants today, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, today is an important day. We are celebrating the Stockbridge Muncie Band of Mohegans reclaiming of land in their ancestral homelands. We're also celebrating the concept of indigenous land management as a key way to further climate resilience in our state. These lands hold valuable cultural significance. Preserving them is important to mitigating the effects of climate change through flood and heat mitigation. As you know, in the coming years, climate resilience will be one of our greatest challenges but it also is one of our greatest opportunities. 
As the Lieutenant Governor mentioned, it's been a difficult year. We've seen a lot of extreme weather. This part of our state has seen a lot of flooding. Um, and we know that we need to zero in on resilience planning and action. Um, and that's what the MVP program is. And we have sort of three core values associated with the MVP program, which I know many of you know, but I'll just mention them again. Collaboration, environmental justice, and action. The heart of the MVP program is collaboration with local municipalities. Um, the whole point of the program is that people who live in their towns know their towns. You know where the streets flood. You know where that culvert is falling apart. Um, and to be able to take the knowledge of the people in the towns and then not only have a plan, because I keep saying to my team, I'm, I'm good with studies, but I kind of would like to see some action. Um, so action is um, a crucial part of this. That you sh It's great to have a plan, but it also is important that you get the funding necessary to actually to be able to implement the plan. Um, so collaboration in many things that we do is important, and it's, um, as the governor says, this is Team Massachusetts, and I think this is a very good example of, all, of us all working together um, to, to move forward. You know, our second core value, as, as you know, is environmental justice. And I'm really grateful to Maria Bone Powers here. She is leading our charge in the executive office. And we have many other people. <laughs> oh, Leah, I, I don't know why I cannot pronounce your name. It's so embarrassing. Oleander, thank you very much, is also part of that team. Um, and uh, moving forward, I know that that team is going to continue to grow. Um, and is going to be an important part of how we run our organization. So we're really leading efforts across the state to weave environmental justice uh, into everything that we do. So the $3 million today for the MVP uh, 2.0 grants um, really are focused on environmental justice. And the idea is to City officials are really important in making decisions about their towns, but it's also important to hear from the people living in the towns and for people to have the skills that they need to participate in the decision-making process and to bring more people throughout the community in uh, to the decision-making process. And that's what MVP 2.0 is about. So really, um, it's a pilot program, so we're going to be really interested to hear how people think um, it went. Um, and really looking for feedback on the next round um, of 2.0, hopefully. Um, thanks to our legislature, we are um, being funded up, uh, appropriately for that program this year, and hopefully that will continue. So as I, note, I noted also, the MVP program also really focuses on action. And today's awards of almost $29 million in the MVP Action Grant includes funds for 79 local implementation projects. Woo. That includes 56 different individual municipalities, 16 regional groups, two water districts, and the Stockbridge Muncie Band of Mohicans. Many of these wards, um, I'll note, are for communities who were at the front lines um, of recent flooding events. Um, and I did want to recognize, I know that, that Conway's here, um, and I know that we've, we've been there, we've seen um, what happened in Conway this year, and Conway's getting $300,000 to do flood modeling um, and to identify, identify nature-based solutions to alleviate flood problems in their town center. Do I have that right? Yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, and I think, uh, I don't, did I, is Williamsburg here? Maybe, maybe not. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hello, Williamsburg. Um, Williamsburg, I think, is another good example. They're, they're receiving $700,000 um, to also to conduct a flood study of the Mill River. Um, and that's going to map the stormwater infrastructure and assess the, the um, stream bank health and the flood storing capacity. So we really are dedicated to supporting these efforts, um, and we really need to be proactive in our thinking about resilience, and that is what we're doing, why we're all here today. So 
As all these new grant awards announced today exemplify the innovation, leadership, and commitment that our communities bring to the MVP program. Your leadership motivates us, and we want to grow this program with you. So thank you, and congratulations to all. And now I'm pleased to turn it over to Shannon Hosley, President Shannon Hosley. Uh, Kolomasi, good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, this is a very emotional and joyful day for the Stockbridge Muncie community. And I want and I want to thank uh, the governor, uh, uh, Lieutenant Governor, and of course the secretary, and all those that made this day possible. And many of you were named, and and my please forgive me if you weren't named. But it it really, to everyone's point, it takes collaboration. Um, climate change is everyone's. Uh, issue and everybody's responsibility and indigenous communities do not believe that the land is inherent. We believe that it is our responsibility to be land stewards and to advocate for future generations. So we are, are grateful to be home today and we are grateful to be partners with all of you that made today possible. You know, today the MVP re uh, grant represents getting back to the origins of what is now being called the Land Back Movement. It really allows us to dig deep into our history while looking towards the future of ind indigenous liberation where everyone has a place in the circle to not only bring their gifts, their skills, and their love for the people and the land. Our mission, like many of you environmental justice warriors, is to continue to foster and create relationships centered around integrated capital solutions and capacity building with our tribal nations and others. It really requires enlisting partners, change makers, allies, community developers, and of course, partners like the state of Massachusetts and MVP grant opportunities like expressed here today. Really, today represents uh, an ability to create a paradigm shift in how society invests in tribal nations. By grounding an investment strategy in, in indigenous systems thinking by recognizing the interconnectedness of all things and our responsibilities to our own lands and to each other. Our approach, we believe, ensures a resilient and regenerative framework from start to finish built around the origins of our homelands. Thoughts to consider as you stand upon this sacred land or place called Monument Mountain is this, that it is the original historic landmark and a sacred place for my people, the Stockbridge Muncie Band of Mohican people, or the upper Hus Hussitanic Valley for over thousands of years a place where somebody could climb to the exposed rocky peak and view the length and breadth of our Hussitanic homelands. The reclaiming of our original land is so much bigger than this. It's a bigger movement of reclamation. With the return of our land, the Stockbridge Muncie tribe will be able to not only reclaim our cultural ties and practices, we, I want to express, we are not trying to reclaim land from ownership in a Western colonial way of thinking about it. We are trying to reclaim our, reclaim our ways of being, which was never based on money. It was the reclamation of our kinship systems, our governance systems, our ceremony and spirituality, our language, our culture, and our food and medicinal, medicinal systems. Those are all based on our relationships to the land. I want to express our sincere gratitude to everyone here today and say a significant anishik, but I also say today our ancestors are smiling upon us knowing we are all doing what's best for not only our citizens of today but our future generations of tomorrow. And I will remind you we all need to do the work that our ancestors will be proud of. Anishik. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, I will just end by saying um, we are proud to support 
the great projects around the state being funded by the MVP program. We look forward to working with you all. Thank you again to the Stockbridge Muncie Band of Mohicans and the town of Stockbridge for hosting us today. And we're excited to work with you all to build a more resilient Massachusetts. Thank you. One other thing real quick. I think if it's all right with everyone, we'd like to take a picture with the recipients um, all together.